Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. I'm talking about Umar Johnson. I just, he annoys the hell out of me. He's been caping for Diddy and just making excuses, just lying. Just lying. Let me see if I can. Um, I want to find because he's done two different clips that have gone viral. He's trying to make it look like it's just the white man trying to take down the black man, and it's like just, just Umar, shut up. Because that's not the case. Let me see if I can find it on uh, X. If not, I might just do a video on it. Okay, this is... Here goes one of the videos. Let's go ahead and watch the King of Pan Pizza real quick before I go. Let me know if it echoes. Hopefully it doesn't. The Prince of Pan Pizza. Let's see what he has to say. Talking about the timing. Not just the agenda, the timing. You know why they gave black people Puff Daddy during election season? You know why they gave black people Puff Daddy during election season? The reason they gave you Puff Daddy during election season, the reason they decided to serve up Sean Puffy Combs a few weeks before the election is they want to distract you from the laws that they are passing. They want to distract you from the policies that they are enacting. They want to distract you from the initiatives that they are implementing. This is a distraction. I hate how people like him act like black people are slow, like we can't walk and chew gum. Do you understand that two things can be right? That Diddy is a deviant who's getting his comeuppance and his karma, and we can still follow elections and politics. We're multifaceted people, okay? It's not a distraction. It's a long time coming and we can still follow the elections. We can do more than one thing. And because they know black people love to see black people disgraced, humiliated and destroyed. They know black people love to see black people disgraced, humiliated and destroyed. Okay, so where is this disgrace? humiliation and destruction when Diddy was perpetuating this on other black people. Let's not forget outside of uh, Danny D came with um, Aubrey O'Day and I forget the other white girl in the group, Shannon or Sharon, whatever her name was. And um, uh, he likes me. He likes me not that girl group dream. And then you had the white boy, Donnie. Most of the people, 95% of the people that Diddy fucked over were black people. But you notice these mush mouths never have anything to say to hold him accountable for how he treated his own black people. Y'all just heard what Choppa said. They made $30 million and they didn't get anything. So it's not about black people celebrating and, you know, uh, rocking out to the downfall of Diddy. Diddy rocked out, benefited, and celebrated the downfall of his own people. Of black people that he could have put in positions to win, to create financial wealth, generational wealth for their families. He chose not to do that. But you're blaming the average black person as opposed to blaming this asshole who 95% of the people from the 90s upwards that he has screwed over were black people? Miss me with the mush mouth bullshit. They said, throw them one of their own. Let's lynch another Negro today to send all the black people over here while we take care of business over here. This is a grand distraction. They always do this 
when they're planning something really, really big that they don't want black people to pay attention to. They always do this. Now, remember, this was the same man for years who would sit here and, and pout and cry that Diddy, Jay-Z, and all these black billionaires, they don't want to help fund my school. They don't want to help fund FDMG Academy. So you can only call out Diddy when they don't want to fund your, your school that still has not opened. Remember, y'all been dragging me for years. I'm like, where is the school, Lumar? He was supposed to open it, I believe, early this year, 2024. Still not open. He has caught these same guys out for not funding his school. But now, all of a sudden, it's all these conspiracies. Okay, sir. When they're planning something really, really big that they don't want American Negroes or Africans around the world to pay attention to. And we fall for the bait every time. There's nothing wrong with a conversation on Sean Puffy Combs. But when you scroll through Black Twitter and you scroll through Black Instagram and you scroll through Black Facebook and you scroll through Black TikTok and all you see is gossip and conversation about one man at a time like this, then you know you are engaged in a grand distraction. And you are doing the same thing. I hate when people get on their high horse, you, sir, gossiping too. And I notice men will act like when they talk about stuff, oh, it's so deep. And no, all y'all are gossipers. And I've said this before. They try to act like it's just the females, oh, spilling tea. You're a gossiper. Fat Joe's a gossiper. Joe Budden. All y'all engage in the same thing. Uh, these men talk more than females. So you're engaging in the same thing because if... If you feel like it's so bad and you're above the fray, why address it? Why not just open up your school and go teach the black babies? Why even address this situation? All y'all are gossipers, including yourself, sir. But y'all let it act like it's just the females. Stephen A. Smith, all y'all are chatty patties, just like the women. So don't act like you better than us when you hitting on the same topics that we're hitting on. You're gossiping too, Umar. Sean Combs is a distraction. And any time you see something like this, you should ask yourself, what are- No, them damn, them four dreadlocks sticking every which way are distractions. Shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Either twist it up or shave it off. <laughs> Get on my nerves, shoot. What are they trying to distract African people away from? <laughs> one of the things they want to distract you away from, one of the things they want to distract you away from, they want to distract you away from the fact that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have no agenda for African people. One of the things they want to distract you away from. See, before they gave you Sean Puffy Combs on a silver platter, before they broke the news on Sean Combs, we were asking Kamala, what are you going to do for us? Be and who stopped asking these questions? Sir, Puffy was rated damn near six months ago, okay? The Fed's been following him for a while now. This didn't happen overnight. People are still asking po for policies on both of these people, on Trump and, and Kamala. Nobody has stopped asking these questions just because Diddy was arrested. Our lives don't stop because Diddy is sitting in jail in New York. We understand that there's an election coming up in less than two months. Before they broke the news on Sean Combs, we were asking Donald Trump, 
What are you going to do for us? September the 16th. He was arrested September the 16th. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks from election. Sean Combs was arrested September the 16th. Exactly seven weeks from election. Why did they do it now? To stop the black political movement for justice. So you mean to tell me because Papa Diddy asked and got arrested and thrown in jail, that's supposed to stop black people from wanting to go out and vote and doing what they need to do to better their families and their livelihood. Like, like it just doesn't make any sense. Nothing is going to stop because this man went to prison. If anything, the victims, you know, can finally find some closure and stop dealing with threats. But as far as all of us who are not entrenched in this whole Diddy situation, our lives are still going to go on. People are still going to go out and vote and do what they need to do. Him being arrested is not stopping the black community from doing what they need to do. He, he doesn't have a hold on people like that, that they're going to put Diddy before what they need to do as far as politics is concerned. That's silly. That's why they arrested Puffy. It has only been. Tomorrow will be seven days. Tomorrow, Puffy would have been arrested for one week tomorrow. Puffy would have been arrested for one week tomorrow. Sean Puffy Combs, the diddler would have been a it ain't been a full week yet it hasn't been a full week and you emotionally immature negro peons it hasn't been a full week yet and you emotionally immature negro peons have taken your attention completely off of election 2024 you have taken your attention completely off of the black agenda from 2024 and you have put it on puff. You have been outsmarted. You have been outmaneuvered. And you have been out strategized by the white power structure once again. This is the same man who during 2020, everybody was like, where is Umar? Why is he not out there protesting with the people? Remember that, everybody, where's Umar? You know, all the people in Philly that was out there protesting, fucking up shit, stomping on police cars. No Umar Johnson be found. Then we ended up finding him. He was in the cemetery, you know, uh, giving, uh, you know, pouring uh, libation to the ancestors. Umar, shut the fuck up. Next, next. He's a clown, he's a clown. The fact that he's trying to act like black people are so slow that, you know, we're, we're just slow enough to allow this whole situation to just distract us and, you know, we can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Sir, sit, sit down. Sit down. You wasn't even willing to march with the people during 2020. He had all types of mush mouth excuses. He was in the cemetery play, praying to, you know what I'm saying, the ancestors and pouring libation and Oshun and all this other stuff instead of being out there with the people. I'm not going to be out there marching because this is not about George Floyd. He just likes to hear himself talk. Next. And even before then, he had said something goofy his first, okay, maybe this is the first video. Okay, on the 19th. He, I don't know if this is a video. We're going to watch this real quick. He was getting drugged for this video here. And then he came out with the other one. Sean Puffy Combs' federal charges have little, if anything, to do with domestic abuse or pedophilia. His major sex crime federally is he's being accused of transporting women across state lines to engage in sex what we call prostitution not casey not the freak offs not underage girls but prostitution why am i bringing this up because i don't support prostitution either 
I do not support men paying for the sugar box. I do not support black women having to sexually exploit their sugar box in order to pay their bills. Sir, how old are we? Stop calling it a sugar box. That just sounds so gross. Sugar box, vanilla cream cookies. Just say what it is. Don't add sugar and weird stuff to it. You know, what he's trying to do here is spin the story of the boxer, uh, Jack Johnson, who they had set up back in like the 1913s, who was married to a white woman. And so because at that time, he's one of the best boxers in the world and they wanted to ro railroad him because, you know, you can't have a black messiah. You can't have black people have positive people to look up to, especially a boxer knocking out white men that they put on this whole situation where they basically accused him of transporting white prostitutes across state line. And one of the alleged white prostitutes was his own white wife. That is what he's trying to insinuate. He's trying to basically add the whole Jack Johnson situation. He's trying to tie that into the Diddy situation. And he needs to stop. Because he obviously has not read the full indictment. With that being said, prostitution is the oldest female business on the planet Earth. Prostitution is the oldest female business on the planet Earth. Prostitution is the oldest female business on the planet Earth. It is the sexual trafficking that Sean Puffy Combs is being accused of. Not domestic abuse, not freak offs, not stomping out Cassie, not engaging in sex with underage women. It is interstate sexual trafficking. <laughs> Y'all can listen to this man. I just, I don't get it. Like at this point when he's on my timeline, I just keep scrolling. So you're just going to ignore the, the, the drug trafficking, the racketeering, the Rico. The, the freak offs are a small part of it. So he's going to ignore all the major stuff, the, the, the AR-15 guns with the scratched off serial numbers. You're just going to ignore all that and just, it's trafficking. No, that's not all he's being charged with. What are you talking about, Umar? So he's just going to ignore everything else and just basically whittle it down to just trafficking and say that prostitution is the oldest form of, you know, uh, work, whatever, right, for women. Yes, it is, but this was not just prostitution. It's one thing if people want to sell their sexual services and they're grown and they're adults. But from what I'm hearing down the, pipe, down the pipeline that's getting ready to come out, they are stating that there are some minors involved because that was in Little Rod's lawsuit. And a lot of those minors were coming from the younger combs. Christian. And I always call him Tristan. I know his name is Christian, but I don't know why he looks like a Tristan to me. Okay? They were saying that a lot of the young girls were being lured in from Justin and Christian, which makes sense because they're young. They can bring in those young girls. So they did say that they're underage people. They're still looking into it because once that comes out, because there was already a 17 year old, remember the girl who, uh, who, who filed the lawsuit before little Rod, she was saying that Diddy and Harvey Pierre are her when she was 17. I broke down that whole lawsuit. So what is he talking about? And then on top of that, like the judge said, it's one thing that these women want to engage in prostitution. The problem is when you're blackmailing people, when you're slamming their head against car windows, when you're telling them that they can't leave, when you're putting hands on them, what part of that is legal prostitution? Because a fair trade ain't no robbery. So if I'm calling you from an escort house and I'm saying I want you to come over here, you know what I'm saying, be at my house at 1 a.m. in the morning, you suck me off, I give you $100, that's prostitution, that's a fair trade. You gave me some sucky sucky, I paid you, you went on by the way. What he was doing was not prostitution. You're literally hiring people and forcing them to sleep with other people. And from what we're hearing, a lot of these girls, like what well, Cassie was saying, she didn't want this. 
but she was forced to have men sleep with her for Diddy's own sick pleasure. He would hire sex workers to bang her and make sure she had on white polish so that when she did sexual stuff to them, I'm not going to say it out loud, it turned them on because of white nail polish. The same white nail polish that Madam Carisha and his blonde-headed coop mama walk around wearing. So Umar needs to sit the hell down. Yes, and somebody, uh, Michelle, Michelle, the drugging too that people are alleging against him as well. What party has a white man just passed out? Remember that video of that white man passed out on that patio couch? Passed out. And Diddy's making a joke of it. But you're trying to make it look like it's all this big conspiracy and they just have him on trafficking. Like it's just made up. So everybody's lying on him. He's silly. He's silly. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.